Please, my mom won't know what to do. Sorry, bro. We like that. In fact, that's one aspect to all of this that I enjoy focusing on. The pain of all the others that know and care about you provide me with strength and inspiration. You should be thankful that you've become important. You're an offering. Nick slid his foot free from beneath one of the masked men, shot upwards with all of his strength, and slammed his boot into another masked face. The figure stumbled backward and grabbed at his mask, but the killer prevented the figure from removing it. Nick freed one of his arms when another masked figure stumbled backward. Lunging to his feet, Nick ran instinctually, pulling his cell phone from his pocket. From memory, he thumbed in his brother's contact. The pain throbbing from his wrist was intense and prevented mobility. He was certain that it had been broken. The phone fell. Nick's stomach felt like it had filled with ice. The rectangular plastic communication device that had meant so much to him slid beneath a stack of wooden pallets that lined the tall cement walls, which appeared damning. He only hoped that his call had connected and that his brother would answer, hear the struggle, and notify the authorities. Before these maniacs killed him would be convenient, but wishful. For now, he would prepare to fight. Survival mode would need to kick in. To the front of him, a small door behind a neatly aligned row of old, broken-down cars became visible. Setting his sights on the door, he thrust his legs forward and sprinted harder than he knew he could. Earlier, he'd downed many drinks and had been drunker than hell. But right now, he was sober. His vision was clear. Tongue dry and swollen, it stuck to the roof of his mouth, which made it hard but not impossible to breathe. The only thing that mattered was reaching that door. The obnoxious crashing of boots chasing him rose in volume. The vibrations of their murderous feet tore at his sanity. The skeleton of a car resting in front of the door, his salvation didn't deter his focus. Head first, he slid underneath the car. His skin screeched and tore as the damp cement tugged it tight. Then he crawled forward. The stomping boots halted. A glimmer of hope couldn't resist expanding in his gut. Then hope diminished when he heard the creaking of metal above. They were running to either side of the car and on top of it. It was now or never. Nick knew three things. One, these maniacs wouldn't stop. Two, this was going to hurt. And three, they intended to kill him. He scraped the skin off of his elbows while dragging himself out from under the car. He looked up and saw the metal doorknob. He rolled to his feet, grabbed the knob and twisted. It was locked. What? What the fuck is this? Nick begged for an answer. It's just a game. You're a random pick, bud. Sorry, one of the masked figures said with eerie calmness. Then a wet towel whipped across Nick's face. The soaking wet tip of the towel snapped into his naked right eye. A million nerve endings exploded painfully. The scream came from his soul. The lens of his right eye ripped free. No one saw it, and no one cared. They dragged him away from the door toward the metal tub at the entrance to the warehouse. A strong metallic odor stung his nasal passages. He knew that the towel had been soaked in some form of chemical. His eye burned badly. Stars, white dots, and then blackness clouded his limited vision. He fell from consciousness. After some discomfort, he was being submerged in freezing cold water. He saw all colors. A rainbow of different colored clouds erupted before his black vision. A euphoric sense surrounded him. He felt lucid, like he'd taken morphine. He was suddenly comforted. Blackness found him.